With the campaign for the presidency in the May 2022 elections having begun in earnest, it is time for the candidates to move beyond promoting their personalities and political affiliations and begin addressing the many substantial issues faced by the nation. After all, if one is bold enough to apply for a job, he or she must be prepared to have something relevant to say in the interview. Good day, thank you for lending an ear to the Voice of the Times for Wednesday, October 13, 2021. For today's editorial, next president must have a responsive energy policy. Voters also benefit from a deeper discussion of the issues that should be included in any presidential candidate's platform. Too often, candidates resort to repeating mere buzzwords and motherhood statements such as provide economic opportunities or improve peace and order or achieve food security to curry favor with voters without explaining and in some cases, perhaps not even fully understanding themselves what those ideas mean. Voters cannot make informed choices if they are not actually informed. And so, in the coming weeks, we will from time to time share our views on key election issues. These views can be regarded as what we would like to see in candidates' detailed policy platforms. But to be clear, they are not endorsements. Rather, they are offered as talking points for the all-important interview between candidates and voters. As the Philippines recovers economically from the coronavirus pandemic and then moves beyond recovery to return to growth, a trajectory we are confident will be realized within the next year or two, implementation of a responsive energy policy will be critical to the country's success. Despite the gains made in the 20 years since the passage of the Electric Power Industry Reform Act or EPIRA of 2001, the Philippines is still beset set by chronic problems of high energy costs and insufficiency and sometimes unreliable supply. Until these problems are solved, the Philippines will continue to fall short of its investment and economic growth potential and continue to be at risk from external shocks such as the crisis in energy supply and prices currently spreading around the globe. A responsive energy policy for the Philippines has three pillars more government investment in energy, promoting diversified investments and development in energy resources with preference given to sustainable energy and comprehensive reform of the energy regulatory structure and market. Again, as these are planks in a policy platform, each candidate may have different ideas about how to realize each of the objectives. These simply represent broad problems for which there may be a number of reasonable solutions. We can, however, offer some examples of what we believe would be a productive approach to managing the country's energy. With respect to government investment in energy, the EPIRA law mandates that electricity generation and distribution be privatized, but where government can improve energy security and the investment environment is in. On the one hand, properly funding what infrastructure it still does control, such as the power barges and other small plants managed by the National Power Corporation, and the other subsidizing or partially subsidizing incentives such as defeat in tariff to encourage development, particularly in renewable energy. This would, in turn, enable government to diversify its energy strategy and encourage development of potentially productive sources that have until now been given very little attention. Most of these, of course, are renewable energy sources, such as biomass generation, tidal power, and hydrogen energy storage, and these, along with the more familiar solar, wind, hydro, and geothermal sources should be given preference. A diversified strategy can also include other, not necessarily sustainable, but still cleaner and more efficient sources, so long as they represent a substantial improvement over current, obsolete means of creating electricity. 
Finally, reforms to the regulatory structure and energy markets are badly needed. Shortcomings in these areas are more responsible than anything else for the Philippines' lack of progress in energy development. Good ideas such as expanding distribution competition, creating a forwards market to reduce power price volatility, and expanding renewable distributed energy generation have been slowed or thwarted entirely by a planning and regulatory structure built on outmoded ideas and a wash in red tape and that is something that desperately needs to change.